A common way to implement energy harvesting on a sensor node is by using solar cells. Now solar cells have been around for decades uh, and are widely used in, uh, in things like calculators. But their use in sensor nodes enables the node to operate without batteries um, indefinitely. But one of the properties of solar cells is that the amount of power that you can get out of them depends on, on the voltage that you're, that you're operating the cell at. So on this graph here, we can see that the, um, the maximum power, this red graph, occurs when the voltage of the cell is around uh, three and a half to four volts. And this point here is called the, the maximum power point. The maximum power point changes depending on the amount of light shining on the cell. So as the light level increases, it's not going to stay in this, in this same position. Now for outdoor solar applications, um, techniques called maximum power point tracking are commonly used so that the circuit is able to follow this point as the light level changes. Now these circuits and techniques use energy in order to do this tracking. And outdoors, the amount of energy you're getting means that this is still beneficial. However, indoors, the amount of energy that it takes to power such a maximum power point tracking circuit actually outweighs the benefits that you get from it. And so usually, you just put up with the hit of going either side of this maximum power point. And the circuit we've developed here um, uses a technique called sample and hold to provide maximum power point tracking indoors as well as outdoors. Now the circuit consumes uh, under 10 microamps, so if you like that's over a million times less than your desktop computer might be using. And because it uses so little energy, this means that it's able to provide a benefit um, when maximum power point tracking indoors. Also, this circuit is able to cold start from light levels of around 100 lux. So this means that if you put the circuit into a dimly lit room without any energy anywhere in it, it would then be able to start harvesting, start up, and begin to power your sensor node. So as I've already said, this circuit uses a technique called sample and hold, where it routinely looks at the open circuit voltage on the solar cell in order to work out what voltage to operate it at. Now obviously this brings with it a trade-off. The more often you sample probably means you're going to be more accurate in, uh, in obtaining that maximum power point. But as a result, you're going to consume more energy to do so. So one of the things we've looked at in this study is looking at um, the amount of light that is available in certain environments and the effect that that has on the maximum power point. So you can see from this graph um, we've got time along the bottom and the amount of um, power that is being harvested shown by that black line and you can see how this changes um, throughout a day in an indoor environment. And what we're able to do from this is then analyse this data to find out what the optimum sampling rate should be for this circuit.